Hello and welcome to another video in this series as we learn Prolog together. Today's um, quite exciting because we're embarking on a new theme. Um, it's about recursion which is quite a powerful idea um, and it enables to solve problems, some problems, in a very elegant way. Um, it's I'm not going to pretend that it's an easy concept for everyone. Um, some people really struggle with it. So what we're going to do is, over this and the next few videos, look at some examples which bring it to life and we'll slowly, as we work through those examples, um, start to see some of the guiding principles for how we develop recursive solutions. Before we dive into coding and, and prologue, um, I'm going to try and talk about recursion in a way that's got nothing to do with code just to bring to life and illustrate some of the ideas and if this example, this non-code example, stays in your mind um, it can be useful for when you uh, think about you know, the other problems that you want to solve with Prolog and just to say recursion is not just about Prolog it's um, a method, an idea, a way of thinking that can be applied to many different languages and it's 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 one of those things where it requires a lot of thinking, but the solutions that you end up with are really elegant and powerful. Right, so looking at the screen, you might be wondering why there's a tree. And the thing we want to observe about this tree is that there's, there's kind of a lot of detail there. Uh, there's branches with smaller branches with smaller branches and so on. And actually, you, you might notice that things in nature are like that, you know, there's a self-similarity, a fractal nature, whether it's, you know, um, mountains, um, the kind of the structure of mountains looks similar at different scales, clouds, river systems, uh, blood flow systems inside, you know, animals and mammals, for example, um, cauliflower, <laughs> um, those, the, many, the way plants grow, trees grow, there's a, there's a kind of a natural organic pattern which is self-similar at different scales. Um, and that's an example of um, a recursive design or a recursive pattern. Um, so the thing to see there is that this tree looks similar to a part of it. So if we took that out, that would look like um, a a tree which also looks like the, the, the big one that we just um, took it from. So there's a self-similarity here. So we're saying the big thing, well the small thing, is like the big thing. Um, so that's an interesting observation. Um, if we tried to write a rule or a set of rules to describe to someone how to draw this, we might say, well, um, a, we, well, we could write infinitely detailed instructions to draw a branch um, and then another little branch, two branches coming off that and lots of little branches there. And our instruction set would be very long um, because there are lots and lots of little branches here. And if there were many more that we couldn't see, so on this screen, you know, we could end up easily with thousands or even millions or an infinite number if you want to think abstractly. Um, so that's clearly not a good um, way of describing how to draw this tree. So let's say that a tree is a branch. So we draw a branch like that with two smaller trees on the end of it. That's the definition. A tree with two smaller trees but the branch. And you might say, well that's a bit silly because you haven't really defined a tree. You're playing silly games. You're being naughty. You know, a tree, you're defining a tree in terms of itself. That sounds like it can't be useful at all. But let's follow it through. Let's say Let's start, let's say a tree is a branch, so we'll draw a branch with two smaller trees. So here I'm supposed to draw two smaller trees and I don't know what they are. So I look at the definition again 
A tree is a branch. So I draw a branch with two smaller trees. Okay, so these two smaller trees are supposed to go here. But I don't know what they, well, what is a tree? Well, let's look at the definition again. Well, it's a branch. Let's draw the branch with two smaller trees. So you can see how following this recipe, I will end up drawing lots of little branches. And I'm going to, you know, even though it might appear that the definition, you know, defines itself in terms of itself and therefore isn't complete, it's still useful because it allows us to draw all these little branches and end up with this fractal tree. Um, you might then say, okay, well, you could keep going forever. And you could. And mathematically that's fine, but practically that might not be. So we need to find a way to stop. Um, so we might say we need another rule to say um, if the branch length is less than, say, 0 0.001, whatever units that is, then we stop. That's not prologue. That's not any programming language. That's just me writing down the thoughts. And what I missed out here is that I reduce the size of the branch every time I go through this um, definition. So there's a continuation rule, continuation, and a stopping rule. And the continuation rule takes a, defines something in terms of itself, but smaller, smaller either in scale or in the level of problem, it reduces it in some sense. If you think about it, if it didn't, then we'd get nowhere. Um, but by reducing this problem, I'm speaking very abstractly, um, then we're defining a tree in terms of a reduced or a smaller tree. Um, and then we have something that tells us when to stop. So those are the two features of a recursive definition. Um, and what I've done here is bring out the principles from a non-coded example, a visual example. Let's now think about a coded example. So if you look at the example uh, number seven, which is online as well on GitHub, um, the first part is very familiar. We're defining simple facts. The relationship is called parent um, and the arity is to remember arity meaning how many parameters it takes. So we've got things which happen to be names of people and this defines um, a parent relationship. Um, so John is a parent of Jane, John is a parent of James, Sally is a parent of Jane and so on. And if we drew a picture of this um, it would be a family tree so let's have a look at that. So this is on the blog you can read this entire tutorial is on the blog so you can read it in more slower time if you like and the blog is written in more careful wording than I'm just doing off the top of my head so that's what the uh, family tree looks like so we've got Jane Sally's a parent of Jane Martha's a parent of Sally and so on um, so that's that's a family tree that we're going to be using as an example and our question is well actually let's just first practice just to warm ourselves up with prologue. So parent, let's just test. John, is that true? Yep, that's true. And we can see that's because it's a simple fact in the database. And we can ask more interesting questions like, um, who is a parent of Jane? And looking at the picture, we know that Sally and John are parents of Jane, so we should get two answers. Let's run that. John and Jane. Yep, that's true. This is just revision. This is stuff we've done before. And we can ask for all the combinations of parents as well. So let's run all through that. There they are. John is a parent of Jane. David is a parent of Martha and so on. Nothing particularly new and exciting there. What we're going to do now is to see if we can work out a relationship for grandparent. So let's draw a picture. So let's draw a kind of a simple family tree with somebody there, somebody there, somebody there, and there's a parent relationship. Maybe somebody there as well. And a grandparent 
just looking at uh, this picture without thinking in terms of code. Well, we can see that this person is a grandparent of this person, and that's because they are a they are a parent of somebody who's a parent of that person. So if this is X and Y, and let's call that A, then we can we can write a definition, can't we? We can say a grandparent. I won't write the full word. A grandparent X and Y is true if X is a parent of A and, remember the comma means and, parent A, Y. So that's saying what we've just said in English, that X is a parent of A and A is a parent of Y. X is a parent of A and A is a parent of Y. If that's true, then X is a grandparent of Y. So that's kind of you know common sense, uh, but it's useful to see how the plain English thinking can be translated into prologue. Um, let's um, let's see if that's let's test that. So you can see here in the code we in our example we have that definition grandparent x y if parent x a and parent a y. And it doesn't matter what a is you know we're not overly obsessed as long as it forms that chain from X to A and A to Y. Let's uh, test it. Grand parent. Let's see. Um, let's look at the picture. Can't look at the list so easily. So Martha and Jane. So Martha and Jane. Those Martha should be a grandparent of. Jane. So let's run that. Confirmed. Brilliant. And that's true because Martha is a parent of somebody who is a parent of Jane. So Martha is a parent of Sally and Sally is a parent of Jane. So on our picture we've got Martha is a, par is a grandparent of Jane because Martha is a parent of Sally and Sally is a parent of Jane. Great. So that's the definition for a grandparent. What about a definition for great grandparent? So I'm going to write GGP X comma Y. How would that be true? Well, we follow the same kind of logic. Um, the same thinking, the same understanding of what a grand great grandparent is. A great grandparent is a parent. is is true if X is a parent of somebody, and that somebody is a parent of somebody else, and then that somebody else is a parent of Y. So it's a it's an extended chain. So let's say. Let's ignore these um, letters here and write our own here. So let's say that's X and that's Y and we've got A and B. So we're saying that X is a great grandparent of Y. If X is a parent of A, A is a parent of B and B is a parent of Y there. So that's converting what we say what we know in plain English into prologue and you can see there's a pattern here that we can keep extended so we could say um, a great 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 grandparent X Y is well I won't do it but you get the idea now you can see that if we're interested in a property called ancestor that defines if one person is an ancestor of another, um, is is, you know, is it grandparent? Is it great grandparent? Is it great 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 grandparent? If you want to do that in general, we couldn't do it like this. We couldn't keep writing lots of rules, one for grandparent, one for great grandparent, one for great 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 grandparent, and so on and so on. That wouldn't be um, elegant, and it might be impractical as well. Um, we could write a hundred of these things, 
but you might have a question which actually requires 101 of those things so it would never be quite sufficient so we need a different approach so when we are um, trying to develop um, recursive definitions as we said earlier it does require a lot of thinking and there's no magic automatic way of doing it um, sometimes it's easy sometimes it's not so there is a process to be gone through which is writing out examples you know getting a pen and paper and and writing out what some of the answers should be and see if you can spot a pattern and spotting the pattern the pattern is the recursive rule so there's almost no way around it really uh, unless it's so obvious that it doesn't need kind of a sketch um, so the takeaway from that is that recursion um, can be difficult it requires a lot of thinking sometimes to produce rules or definitions which are quite small and elegant but there's no way to hide the fact that you know that it does require a bit of effort um, and that's okay you know that's 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 good we want to end up with small elegant rules but we do need to put in the work um, but you get better at it over time as well so what we've done here is just written out some um some of those uh, facts that we um know to be true in plain English. So a grandparent is a parent of a parent. A great grandparent is a parent of a grandparent. A great 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 grandparent is a parent of a great grandparent. Is there a pattern here? Is there some structure there? Well we can see that this element is common and this is an ancestor and this is an ancestor, this is an ancestor, this is an ancestor, this is an ancestor, and that is an ancestor. So what we seem to be distilling from this is that an ancestor is a parent of another ancestor. But that ancestor is actually kind of a level down. So that matches what we saw earlier around recursive definitions, defining something in terms of itself, defining an ancestor in terms of an ancestor, but here we know that it's a level down. And the link is parent. So does this work? You know, let's just kind of test this rule on what we know. So is a great grandparent a parent of an ancestor? It is. So a great grandparent, that's a kind of ancestor. And so is this. And, the, and that's one level down. So that's the start of forming a recursive definition. Again, not easy, but this is the kind of process and thinking you have to kind of go through. I just to kind of extract out the commonalities, extract out the structure. You might have spotted that this thing is a bit anomalous because that's the same as that, and that will we'll use that in a minute. Let's um, let's test this um, partially formed rule. Right. So what we've just um, derived um, as partially formed rule is to say that an ancestor is a parent. Of an ancestor one level lower and we're just going to test that and we're going to ask ourselves a question we're going to say is Martha an ancestor so we're writing now a property ancestor Martha Jane so Martha's here in the family tree and that's Jane and we're just going to talk through that so we're saying ancestor Martha Jane so this is true if Martha is a parent parent of another ancestor one level lower is that true well Martha is a parent of somebody called Sally and is she an ancestor well to answer that we need to go back to our definition the recursive definition so the question then becomes is Sally an ancestor of Jane. Ancestor. So to answer that, we say Sally, is she a parent of an ancestor one level lower? 
Hmm, something not quite right here. That didn't help us. So what this has illustrated is that this rule would work, but eventually, you know, if we started with Deirdre, for example, Deirdre is a parent of an ancestor called Martha, and Martha is a parent of an ancestor called Sally, but is Sally an ancestor of, or is Sally a parent of an ancestor? She's not here. She's actually the parent of Jane. So we need to extend what this has highlighted is that our definition is not quite complete. We need to say that if somebody is a parent, they are also an ancestor. So parent XY implies ancestor XY. And remember in prologue, we write that the other way around because the arrow goes right to left. So ancestor Sally Jane is is true, ancestor is true, because Sally is a parent of Jane, this thing here. So we needed, and that's the stopping rule. So the continuation rule would just take us down the family tree until we reach a, pair, a simple parent relationship. So ancestor, 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 simple parent. So in code, in the example, we have defined an ancestor and you can see there are two rules there and you can probably guess that one is a continuation rule which defines ancestor in terms of itself there you see ancestor is defined in terms of itself um, you can see the editor here telling us it's a recursive call it's, it's trying to be helpful <laughs> which is nice um, and we can see the stopping rule which was to say if x and y are one is a, if X is a parent of Y, then it is also an ancestor. X is an ancestor of Y. So that's the stopping rule. You all, you might um, notice that actually here, we wrote the stopping rule second, one, two. But here we've written the stopping rule first. And there's a reason for that, and this is important. Um, as you know, the way prologue works, the way it resolves queries is to work queries left to right and trying to match rules top to bottom. So it starts at the top and works its way down. And we want it to find the stopping rule first before it um, and give that an opportunity before the continuation rule. Because if it's only ever, if it, if the continuation rule came first, there is a risk in some scenarios that the continuation rule will carry on forever. I would never end. Uh, it, it needs to always be trying to see, can this be terminated? Can this you know ladder be stopped? Can this loop be ended? So the termination rule always comes first. And that's because in prologue, it's uh, tested first. Right, so you can see how what we've talked about matches this definition. Some of you might be thinking, whoa, hang on, isn't there a problem here? that this um, definition, the head, is the same as this one. Now, in the previous video or two, we said that it's okay to have more than one rule with the same property, as long as the arity was different. So if one had two parameters and one had three, or one had one and two, Prolog would see them as different. And here, we seem to have broken that rule, we seem to have ancestor with an arity of two and ancestor with an arity of two. Um, prologue will see them as related. It won't cause a problem. It just means that the first one is applied first and then the second one is then applied. Um, but they are related because obviously it's the same head. So when we have a query like ancestor, let's say um, um, Martha and Jane. Let's think through what Prolog does. To answer this question, Prolog tries to look in the, see if the, the property matches anything in the database of simple facts. Nothing does. So then it tries to match this with the rules. And there's an arity of two here, Martha and Jane, two, prop, two um, parameters. And so this matches, but they both match. So it tries the first one 
and then the second one and if there's a third a third one and so on so it's, it's not a problem so let's test that let's run that ancestor martha jane is true and it's saying oh give me another go it might there might be a different answer and there isn't so this isn't saying it's false it's saying it's true but its attempt at finding an alternative answer failed so martha is an ancestor of jane um let's let's test the parent relationship sally jane Do you remember on the family tree sally is a simple parent not a grandparent or a great grandparent so this should work because you know sally a parent is an ancestor and that does work because if it's a parent then it's an ancestor great so i hope um i hope this has been a useful first introduction to um, recursion recursive definitions um, at the very beginning we talked about a tree <laughs> and tried to talk about recursion without code um, then we worked through motivating this recursive definition of an ancestor by saying that actually we could define grandparent and great-grandparent and great-great-great-grandparent and that would be impractical and not very elegant so we needed to find a more general way of defining ancestor and we did that um, using a recursive definition and to arrive at that we had to use pen and paper to sketch out you know some things that are true and see if we can spot a commonality a pattern or a structure because that structure often is the definition of this is a recursive definition um, and we talked about how a recursive definition has a continuation rule that defines something in terms of itself but a step down so the step down here is if that's a great grandparent then that's a grandparent if that's a grandparent then this is a parent and then we have a stopping rule which um, stops the kind of infinite loop um, and just defines the thing the property finally you know ancestor here is not defined in terms of ancestor it's defined in terms of parent which are simple facts which are just true um, so those are the common things that are always in a recursive definition there's a lot to take in there um, don't worry you know the next few videos we will look at um, more examples different examples small examples and bring these principles to life in different ways um, what I'm going to do now, just to kind of um, finish, is just to show that actually what we used to do with Prolog and ask, you know, how can something be true, also works with recursive definitions. So if we say, who are the ancestors of Jane? It, it finds them all, John, Sally, Martha, Deirdre. And another thing we can do is we can ask for all the um, relationships that are ancestors, X and Y, that's a more general query so there they are all the John is an ancestor of Jane Martha is an ancestor of Sally and so on so that's quite useful um, now just before I finish this video you can stop here if you want but um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through in some detail um, this uh, query um, so I'm gonna say Martha Jane. I'm going to run through that in some detail on that sketch. So if you want, you can stop here and come back later. But it's I think it's important to see it in detail how that works. Um, so let's let's have a coffee if you want. Press pause and then come back later, so we're going to answer this query. Right. So we've got the query question in Prolog. That's question mark dash ancestor Martha and Jane so we're just going to work through the detail of that so to answer this query prolog will see if you can match the property with something in the database either a fact or a relationship none of the facts match because this property is ancestor and these properties are parent but the rule the recursive definition the recursive rules they match so that matches and that matches and there's two rules so it has to try both so let's try the first one 
ancestor Martha Jane is true if parent XY Martha Jane is true. Is that true? Martha Sally is true, but Martha Jane is not. So that's not true. So that fails. So it tries the second rule here. That one failed. Let's try that one. Ancestor Martha Jane is true if parent Martha of somebody is true and ancestor A Jane is true. That somebody being the same A. So this has turned into two goals that have to be true in order for ancestor Martha Jane to be true. So we then have to work left to right um, of this um, of this thing here. So the first one is parent Martha A. So parent Martha A. That's is that true? How can it be true? There's a variable there. Well, it can be true if it matches this one, Martha Sally. So A equals Sally will make this true. This this um, first part. A equals Sally. And now we need to carry that forward. A equals Sally to see if this is true. Ancestor Sally Jane. So this query is Ancestor Sally Jane. Is that true? And that's notice how we've transformed the question Martha Jane, is that, is that an ancestor, to Sally Jane. And if you look on the kind of family tree, it's a level down. So we, we kind of, by doing this recursive definition, we are reducing the step at a time, each cycle, we're reducing the kind of complexity of the problem by one step. So we started with Martha and asking if Martha is an ancestor of Jane. And now we're asking if Sally is an ancestor of Jane. We've moved down the ladder. So that was question one almost, and this is now question two. And how is this true? So to answer this one, it's the same process again. We have to apply those rules. So the apply the first one, ancestor parent. Is is Sally a parent of Jane? And yep, it is. Sally is a parent of Jane. So this time the first stopping rule matched. We didn't need to go on to the continuation rule. So this is true because the stopping rule is true because it's a basic fact there, Sally Jane. So that's true, um, which means the whole um, body of this rule is true, which means the original question is true. So there's a lot of steps there. Um, and if you want to practice, try that with Deirdre. And if you do that, what you find is she's higher up the kind of family tree. She's the, uh, and she's the parent of Martha. And what you find is that you have more cycles of applying these rules. And each time you do that, you move down that ladder from Deirdre to Martha down to um, Sally. And in fact, you might recognize that when you do this, the question of Deirdre being an ancestor of Jane becomes the question of Martha being an ancestor of Jane, which is what we've just done. So you can see we've already done the work and that's an, another kind of layer of the onion on the outside. And that's a common thing that happens with um, recursive kind of situations. Um, so yeah, I hope um, this kind of detailed walkthrough is helpful. Um, the main points to take away are one, do try it yourself because having that hands-on experience of the mechanics of recursion is really helpful. Um, otherwise, it will forever feel very magic um, and that's not a good kind of um, thing to carry forward. Second, the recursive definitions emerge out of um, either they're very obvious in, if you're very talented, but 
in often you have to kind of write out um, what the um, data is like, what what the truths look like, and see if you can spot a pattern or a structure or a uh, a thing that links um, the various facts. And often that can be expressed as a recurse, as a um, continuation rule, something in terms of itself. And that's only successful if it reduces the size of the problem by one. But there needs to be a stopping rule, otherwise we keep applying that cyclic definition again and again. Fantastic. So we'll stop there. Next time we'll look at another even smaller example, actually, um, of uh, recursion, um, just to practice it and see how it can be applied to lists, actually. So we'll, we'll see you then. Bye.